you know, holding money on Monero is a risk to do to this. Holding money on Bitcoin is not a risk to do that because if there is another inflation bug in Bitcoin, it will be caught. So, but first, uh, Peter Todd, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, how, has your, how has your life been changed after people, <laughs> people thinking you're Satoshi? I mean, I went and took some uh, security measures because, you know, obviously if uh, you get accused of being a multi-billionaire, someone might want to uh, take that money. So, uh, and I'm not going to say exactly what it was, but uh, you know, I, I took some measures there. But uh, I think the main, you know, the main obvious thing is, of course, more people wanting a photo with me, but uh, that was something that had already happened before. And, you know, I'm, I'm still just going to a ton of conferences as usual and uh, speaking a lot of stuff. So but, hopefully but, nothing much is going to change, but we'll see. <laughs> well, you're, 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 you're treated like a rock star now. How does that feel? I mean, I was already treated like a rock star. Oh so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. All, all it's done is like increased intensity of an event. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, this, like, I should say, Bitcoin um, in general is like the fourth thing I've done in my life that got me significant... Um, you know, contact with the press. So this is really nothing new. It's just, you know, a level above, but it's not that different. Okay. On, on your technical vision, right? Uh, what do you see as the biggest technical challenge that Bitcoin still faces today? And how do you think uh, these can be solved? You know, I got to point out, like, Lightning, I think, solved most of the technical challenge that I would have said we had in, say, 2014. Um, Lightning works pretty well. It arguably doesn't scale Bitcoin to like the entire world population, but it gets us surprisingly close. A um, good example of this is you know you could open roughly a billion Lightning transactions or Lightning channels per year on the chain with the capacity we have right now. There's only on the order of like maybe four or five billion people in the world to own smartphones, and unless you own a smartphone, you know a Lightning channel doesn't mean anything to you anyway. You know, that is sort of the bare minimum requirements to participating in Bitcoin fully. So, while it's certainly nice to see, you know, multi-person per output covenants using L2 systems coming out, if we don't get that, I think Bitcoin will still reach so many of the goals people had for it anyway. So, you know, there are technical challenges still, but we're much, you know, we've solved much more of it than we did when I started Bitcoin. You know, we're probably like, say, 75% of the way there not like 10%. Right. Bitcoin often faces criticism regarding privacy and scalability, right? So do, um, do you think there should be more focus on privacy improvements such as Taproot or is scalability at a higher priority right now? Well, so I'd say the main criticism people have with privacy and Bitcoin is they all want on-chain privacy. And the problem fundamentally is that has trade-offs. If you have really good on-chain privacy that obscures how much each coin is worth and where it's going, that fundamentally makes it harder to go fix things when things go wrong. It also makes it fundamentally um, impossible to detect inflation through straightforward methods. Obviously, you know, something like, say, Monero, if the math works, the math is preventing inflation. But if the math doesn't work, how do you figure out whether or not the math works? You know, there's no numbers you can go add up. You know, coin amounts in Monero are hidden. And well, I think that's a reasonable trade-off for something like Monero to make. Do you really want a $2 trillion asset where one computer bug could actually take down the entire system? Like it or not, you know, Monero and coins like it, they've had a string of inflation bugs that could have killed the coin. You know, holding money on Monero is a risk to do to this. Holding money on Bitcoin is not a risk to do that. Because if there is another inflation bug in Bitcoin, it will be caught. We've had one in Bitcoin before. Even with so few people involved in Bitcoin, that got noticed within a matter of like, I, don't know, I think on the order of like an hour or two. Like, and it got fixed very quickly. So if Bitcoin has on-chain privacy, that type of bug could be used to destroy the entire currency. I don't want to take that risk. I'd rather implement privacy on layers above Bitcoin, like CoinJoin. You know, lightning, etc. While Bitcoin is being adopted more and more globally, it often remains a niche, right? And what do you think is needed to make Bitcoin truly mainstream, both techno te technologically and so socially? Well, you know, on the one hand, I think we can argue Bitcoin is already truly mainstream in the sense that the mainstream know what Bitcoin is. They, if they wanted to, they could get it, etc. 
Um, I think you can also argue that Bitcoin is very close to mainstream in a lot of countries because double digit percentages of the population hold Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency. But I think when people really talk about adoption, what they really want is all transactions denominated Bitcoin, all wealth held in Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera. And like it or not, you know, the story of how you achieve that really depends on the country. And something like El Salvador, even saying it's legal tender was not enough to get adoption in the sense that people switch to Bitcoin. You know, you had to have the alternative collapse first and the US dollar hasn't collapsed. And I also got to point out that El Salvador, they didn't adopt sound money when they adopted Bitcoin. They adopted sound money back in like 2002 or whatever it was when they adopted the US dollar. From the point of view of El Salvador, that's when they adopted sound money because that's when they adopted money that the government couldn't inflate. Bitcoin is just a backup. And with uh, you know, the agreement coming down with the IMF, I mean, you could even make the argument maybe Bitcoin was just a negotiation tactic to get money out of the IMF. That would be very strategic, like 12 moves ahead. Yep. Yeah, wow. Well. Okay, on the future of Bitcoin development, Bitcoin's development largely depends on community-driven innovations. Do you see any risk in how Bitcoin cores develop and do you think more checks and balances are needed? I mean, there's a lot of people who hate on Bitcoin Core for all kinds of reasons. Um, you know, there's Luke Jr. camp who wishes Bitcoin Core added, frankly, futile filtering. Um, and, you know, I don't think Bitcoin Core is perfect, but, like, I don't think the hate they've been getting is reasonable. Bitcoin Core does their job reasonably well. Um, you know, I think certain things about, for instance, how they've adopted like truck transactions, you know, it wasn't a very good solution. And you could argue some of that what got adopted for political reasons. But, you know, none of this is like bad things. Yeah. This is just not doing as good a job as they could. And I think you really got to take criticism of Bitcoin Core with a grain of salt because they usually come from people who have a vested interest in getting something implemented that's being rejected. And certainly, I think that's true with a lot of the software proposals, where there's endless groups of people who want, you know, things like Op Vault, Op Cat, you know, Op CTV even. And these things just haven't gotten consensus. In a lot of cases, they're not going to get consensus because they're not good ideas. I mean, drive chains is, I think, one of your worst examples of this. Drive change is just a terrible idea. Like, I'm sorry, it's a terrible idea. Well, it should not be implemented. You don't have and, to be sorry. <laughs> you know, you're always going to have people who hate on Bitcoin Core because they refuse to do it. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Bitcoin Core did their job there. They rejected this bad idea. On your personal role, you're one of the most influential voices in the Bitcoin community. And what motivates you to remain involved with Bitcoin? And what do you see as your most important contribution to the ecosystem? I mean, certainly, you know, I agree with the uh, ethos of Bitcoin. I agree with censorship resistant uh, money, et cetera, et cetera. But also I'd say, you know, personally, I mean, I like giving talks. I like being up on stage. You know, I, I like teaching people, you know, like tomorrow I'll be going and giving a maybe two, three hour lecture on all of the different ways where, you know, Bitcoin um, has traps. I mean, the lecture is kind of jokingly called Bitcoin is doomed, you know, all the things wrong with Bitcoin and all the sort of traps you'll run into developing on it. And my role in there is to really teach new developers about the pitfalls they can go and encounter and how to overcome them. And I like that. I'm good at that. So you're actually an educator. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's some technical stuff I've done too, but I'm not as excited about spending hours doing programming as I think some people are. So naturally, I, I tend to gravitate towards doing things which teaches other people how to do the work for me. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Yeah. So one last question, a really, a really bold one. What is your seed phrase? What's my seed phrase? Yeah. Oh, I decided to pick a really easy one. Um, I think it was A, B, C, D, <laughs> maybe one, two, three, four. Um, you're so, you're there are a few more numbers there. You're sharp, man. I, li yeah. I, like, I like your response. Yeah. I, I'm asking everybody at the end yeah, of the yeah. interview. Yeah. And the, the reason why I'm asking is because, you know, retailers, they often make that mistake. Yeah. And it's, I think it's awesome for, for, for them to see that there are heroes or even influencers, yeah. professionals, how they react. Yeah. And so then be ingrained in yeah. their minds, like, don't ever give it yeah. away. <laughs> so thanks so much, man. Yeah. Cool. Yes, have a good time. Thank you.